What's going on guys? My name is the Sub Pretty Kid and today I'm connect you guys with my commentary, review, thoughts, and you know, just overall my opinions on Black Ops Street's DLC 1 Awakening. So this DLC was sort of a hit or miss. If you guys are a big zombies fan, then it's kind of a big hit because Darius and Draken was a really good map. But if you guys are mainly a multiplayer type of player, then you know it was kind of a bust because the multiplayer maps kind of sucks. There was one kind of good one and even then it isn't really a good one because you would kind of prefer to play the original maps that came on the disc rather than this DLC. So let's start off with Splash in multiplayer. So once this DLC was actually announced, it was announced a full two months before it was actually released. So in that time, everyone had lots of time to prepare mentally and physically for this DLC. And heading into it on the multiplayer side of things, besides Skyjacked, Splash was anticipated as this map's like best map. It's gonna be the best thing to come out of this. Kind of how Grind was in Black Ops 2's first DLC. But in retrospect and in reality, according to me and lots of other people it's kind of the overall opinion splash is actually the worst map to come out of dlc one for the sole reason that it's just way too big uh you know comparing this back to grind grind was a small close quarters map. it had tons of flow you knew where the spots were you knew where the camping was going to take place you knew where rushy was going to take place and here you don't really have that because it's just too damn big there's too many routes you can go underwater you can fly into the ship there's tons of corridors I I've played the map a good number of times and I'm still surprised that oh he flanked me through there because I didn't I didn't know that there was a route to go through there and overall this map just kind of confusing and it's kind of the worst one to come out of this first DLC now moving on to Skyjacked besides Splash Skyjacked was just you know so much hype because it was actually a remake of Black Ops 2's Hijacked so comparing this back to there it still kind of plays the same they did have to remake a couple of things because you know Black Black Ops 3 has different type of movements. So, you know, the biggest one and the most obvious one is obviously, you know, the left side of the ship. It has a big ass hole in it that you can, you know, jump off the ship and fly into and, you know, the other way around. And also, what kind of kills this map, you know, what kind of kills any type of flow it had to it is that on the other side of the ship, not the side with the hole in it, but the other side that's kind of solid, you can actually jump over the railing and actually, you know, wall run on the side. And that completely flips the spot it kills any type of flow you have and this is kind of a main problem on domination and I believe hard point uh, because you know it just flips the spawns you'll lose a flag and then it's just kind of a cheap way to actually get ahead in the game because in domination there's tons of flow you know if you guys defend the B flag good then you're gonna win but it's kind of cheap how if you're actually defending it good and the other team just sucks it kind it's kind of a bad flow that they could just jump over the side of the ship and kill you from behind and take the B flag and gain a lot of momentum while you're trying to spawn back and you know get back into your positions. So that's the main problem with this in Black Ops 3. I mean, in Black Ops 2, this was kind of a hit or miss as well because, you know, you could be the one spawn trapping and predicting the flow, or you would be the ones that would join the game late and, you know, be the ones being spawn trapped and eventually have to leave the game. So overall, I would give this maybe like a 6 out of 10. It's not really good, but if you get into a lobby where no one wants to be an asshole and do the cheap trick by going on the side of the ship, then it could actually be an enjoyable time. Moving on to Gauntlet. Gauntlet wasn't really predicted to be a good map. It was just really interesting because it had the whole dynamic of having three different, I guess, weather climates and everyone thought to themselves, oh, how's that gonna play out? How does it work? Does the map change mid-game or something like that? And actually, no, it doesn't. It's just split up into three separate places. All the way to the left, you have the jungle area, and in the middle, you have the sort of ice area, and all the way to the right, you have the urban area, which is kind of like a city type of thing. And I'm gonna tell you guys right now, up front, the jungle area and the urban area are really irrelevant the biggest part of this map is the ice part and that's where the entire flow is going to go from that's where you know there's sniper spots and stuff like that uh the jungle area and the urban area are just mainly used to flank around so they're really kind of irrelevant and you're and you're not really going to be at a disadvantage if you don't go in those areas you'll be perfectly fine if you stick in you know the icy area and like i said before the other areas are just used to flank uh so this one isn't really as good as sky Jacked, I would say I think it's kind of good uh, like in my opinion it's not bad but it's not good either it's not really you know anything amazing you know once we look back at all the DLC maps that came out of this game this one's gonna be kind of the least relevant one to you know <laughs> to you know come out of this game 
So the final map for multiplayer is Rise. Now Rise, in my opinion, was the dark horse heading into this DLC pack because everything else had something going for it. I mean Splash was, you know, just predicted to be like the sort of grind for Black Ops 3. Skyjacked was obviously, you know, hijacked. And Gauntlet had the sort of interesting thing of how are the climates going to change. But in my opinion, Rise has tons of good flow to it. The main sort of part of this map is the middle part, which has a big old crane in it. There's actually a bunch of camping spots you can kind of rush through there and the other areas on the side are mainly used to flank and I kind of like how this map sticks to the traditional three lane system I believe everything else does except splash splash has too many things that connect all three lanes besides the end parts if I explained that right sorry if I didn't uh, but yeah three three out of the four maps actually follow that three lane system pretty well so kind of like gauntlet rise isn't gonna be a spectacular map it's not gonna be really memorable but it is the best one one that plays the best especially compared to like Splash or Skyjacked or Gauntlet. Gauntlet honestly I just find it to be boring but Rise whenever I join this I'm like oh we're playing Rise this is, this is actually gonna be a fun time and you know most of the time it is because if you play this map right if you know the spawn locations then you're gonna have a really fun time on this map. So overall, on multiplayer, the maps were really just a big miss. And you know, it's kind of good that we had this now for the first DLC because this is usually how it happens. If this is a really big miss, you know, the developers will see it be like, oh man, we really need to get our stuff together. They brainstorm better maps and then DLC 2, 3, and 4 are going to be, you know, better maps and going to have better things in them, at least for multiplayer. So heading on to the Zombies map, Dirt, Eyes, and Draken. Uh, it's been out for a long time. I believe everything on the map is actually found. You know, we got the Plunger, the Easter Egg, the Panzer. And overall, this map, first of all, it is way better than Shadows of Evil and the Giant. First of all, the Giant, it's just boring. It's too simple for me. I, you know, it's the third time I've gone to Doris. Just never talk to me about the Giant again. And comparing this to Shadows of Evil, it's actually way simpler. The biggest problem for Shadows of Evil was the Pack-a-Punch system. And I'm so glad. Hashtag God bless Valdahar that he actually thought to actually introduce a better pack a punch and way more similar pack a punch system in Derise and Draken. So we should all be thanking him for that. Now, as for features on the map, the wonder weapons were obviously the bows. Now, the bows were actually really cool, and there's actually talk that in DLC 2 we're going to be getting elemental swords, and I really don't want that. I really miss the traditional way of having one wonder weapon coming from the box. I love <laughs> I love the randomness of it coming from the box. If you know if in the next DLC we have a buildable wonder weapon, just one of them, I guess I can live with that. But I honestly just miss old school Ascension, Shangri-La, Call of the Dead, where you know you could get the scavenger, the baby gun, the thunder gun from the box. And you know if you got it, you were like, oh man, not better than you guys. And your friends would be like, oh man, you guys got the wonder weapon. Please put it back in. <laughs> and you know it's just a really fun time and just really brings back awesome memories. But actually focusing back on the bows, uh, they're actually really good. The best ones are obviously the storm bow and the wolf bow but we also have the fire bow and I think it's called the void bow something like that the one that shoots purple skulls uh, they're all really good but you know the main one's gonna be the storm bow if you're playing on solo you're gonna get this one every single time guaranteed uh, so the bows are actually pretty fun and the quests are actually they give me something to do instead of getting the wonder weapon from the box so I can kind of see the debate going on there but I just really miss the old school way so the wonder weapons are good for what they are now the Ragnaroks are actually kind of cool the only bad thing about them is that once to place them down you actually have to pick them back up which is kind of a drag if they were just the way they are maybe they float around you then you know that would be really good maybe they might be better than the swords but as they are they're actually really good as well now the boss for this map is the panzer the panzer pre-patch was really hard it was literally on the line of being overpowered and being a hard challenge and sometimes I felt like I played jump rope with that line because sometimes I'd get a really BS death and then sometimes it would just be a hard challenge but ever since the patch, it's become really easier. In my opinion, a little bit too easy. But, you know, a lot of zombie players were complaining about it. So I just didn't really see the challenge in it. So overall, this map is actually pretty fun. The only complaints I have about it is that it didn't introduce a new perk, which, you know, that's what I look forward to every single map, dude. I just love the perks and zombies. But it did reintroduce Electric Cherry via the Wonder Fizz. So that was actually pretty cool and a pretty good consolation prize, I think. And, you know, that was actually really cool for them to do. And the only other complaint I have is, of course, the rocket. Why does a rocket need to be tested every five minutes? Come on, man. No one does that. I'm going to go 
ask NASA right now, dude. No one does that. Uh, so yeah, those are pretty much the only complaints. Other than that, the map is actually really good. It's really challenging. If you guys don't want it to be simplistic, then you can go for the Ragnaroks, the Plunger, the Easter Egg, you know, the, the Bow Quest. You could do every single bow. You know, just all that stuff. But if you guys want it to be simplified, all you need to do is get maybe the KM44 and a bow and just buy a couple of perks and you're really good to go. So this map, I feel, is really good. It's obviously better than the ones we had previously in Black Ops 3 at least. Uh, so overall, I would give this map a 9 out of 10. It's actually really good and you can play this map how you want to. Like I said before, you could be really complicated and do every little thing you can do. Go on all the quests and stuff like that. Or you could be very simplistic and play it like you would Keener to Toten or something like that. But anyways guys, there you guys have it. DLC 1 was kind of a big hit or miss. If it were just for the multiplayer maps, I would tell you guys do not buy this. Do not waste your 15 bucks on it. But if you guys are actually a big Zombies fan, then Durai's a Dragon Man. If you guys haven't played it by now, I don't know what you're doing with your life. But just gather 15 bucks, man, and just buy it for Durai's and Dragon. And there you guys have it, guys. Those were my opinions on DLC 1. If you guys did enjoy it, then don't forget to drop a like down below. Subscribe for more Black Ops 3 Zombies videos. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out.